What's the best boot pattern for do-it-yourselfers? This one, of course. My name is Terry Edmonds, and I've been in the shoe industry for over 18 years. I've teamed up with Tandy Leather Factory to bring you a free moccasin masterclass. We've taken a weekend class and condensed it to about 40 minutes for you. Thank you so much to Tandy Leather Factory for making this possible for all of us. It is their mission to inspire people around the world to improve their leather crafting skills and I like that mission. I can get behind that. Thank you so much, Tandy Leather Factory, for sponsoring this video and helping to educate the world. Thank you for subscribing and for watching. Click the notification bell if you want to know when I release new and interesting videos just like this one. If you'd like to find out more about me and my shoe designs, go to terryedmonds.com. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. In the beginner's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make the plain simple version. In the advanced tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this plains boot moccasin, which comes with a sole for outdoor wear. I've included a complete list of the supplies in the description below, including a link to the Tandy Leather Factory website where you can find a huge array of wonderful leather crafting tools, all at your fingertips. So let's take a closer look at this pattern pack. This includes sizes five to 12 adult sizes. Let's just, con let's just categorize them as size five to 12 men's sizes because they run pretty big. So I'm a woman's nine, which means I would wear a men's seven. It's two sizes difference. So uh, you'll see in the entire pattern, it has the legs, uh, those are the backs. Then we've got the soles, the fronts of the legs, and then we also have some fringe, which is here on the bottom. And we also have the uh, vamp, which is the upper, and the instructions. We also have the rest of the sizes in the sole and the backs. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, lay this on the ground, step on it and make sure that it fits my foot properly. Now that I've tested the foot pattern, I feel very confident that it's gonna fit me just right because my foot fit from end to end. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my lovely candy scissors and I'm gonna cut out all of my pattern pieces and then I will follow it up with my hole punch and I'm gonna go ahead and punch out all of the holes on the pattern. So I've cut out everything, punched the holes in them, and just a couple of tips that will make your job much easier down the road. Really try to punch those uh, black dots right on the dot, because if you, as you're stitching, and once you've done a number of these, you realize if, the, if you're more accurate on the hole placement, everything will work out better for you down the road. So try to be pretty accurate there. And then the other tip that um, I do for myself is I make a separate insole and this is not in the pattern pack, but it's right here. It's this insole. So I just take some paper, traced it, traced out my line, and then I marked my top spot and the bottom spot there. Um, so that when you cut your, your, this, this piece that you will need to cut, you'll know exactly where to line it up. 
And so that's a really big helpful hint. And if you're noticing, there's only one of each because you're actually gonna reverse this and use this as your other leg, you know, the other foot. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to tracing the pattern. One of the things that I like to point out when you're lying down your uh, pattern is you want to use the finest parts of the leather for the most visible parts of the boot, the top of the boot, the front of the boot. Those I would lay out on the leather in the best spots. And I also like to mirror the pattern. So if I find, for instance, I found this really nice section of this leather hide. And so I've got the first boot pattern goes here and then I just mirrored it over here so it's all the the when you look at the boot the fronts of the boots are going to look the same and I really like that now I'm laying down the next piece this pattern here which is for the sole and as we know that's not even going to be showing because that's going to be under the foot and likely there's going to be a sole a, a one of my smooth crepe soles underneath this so you won't even see the bottom so i like to use the maybe the hide that has a little uh, more of the marks like uh, at the very edges you can see where the clips were holding the leather so anyway i'm going to use this piece because it has you know it's it's uh it's still gorgeous but it's less gorgeous as the other ones so i'm going to go ahead and finish up this pattern I'm progressing on this pattern, but one thing I wanted to point out was that um, when I'm doing these straight lines on this pattern here, um, I can hold it down with my fingers, but it's also nice to use something like, this is the see-through grid ruler from Tandy, and it's super handy. And so I will just take it, press it down against the edges and hold it there so I can do my line, and then also hold it there so I can do the, the holes here. So super handy, and I'm also using my leather marking pen. Uh, it is a liquid, so it makes it easy when I get through this tiny little hole to actually make the mark noticeable. Whereas in a ballpoint pen, you're you know trying to dig in there to get the the mark. So anyway, I'm really enjoying my leather marking pen. Next up is cutting the leather. I'm using my Craft Pro shears from Tandy. I've had these for a really long time and every time I taught a class, I always had uh, these scissors. They're priced right and they say that they're really sharp and they last a long time and I can vouch for that. Awesome shears. Um, they also have so many other choices in the Tandy catalog. Um, just really great things. I like these little leather shears that they've got. Um, I'd say take some time to look through the catalog because they've got some awesome things. Sometimes I'll even use my rotary uh, cutters. I have this one as well and uh, Tandy, I actually called the company and had them kind of guide me through that and they were right on the money about it. So they sent me this nice uh, rotary cutter, which I also would probably use on the pattern here with the items that had straight lines. I'll go ahead and use my um, 
my cutting pad that I just got from Tandy and I'm gonna use my rotary shears. So we'll do that together. all of the pattern pieces and now the task is to punch the holes so you can hand stitch and um, I'm using this 3 and 30 seconds hole punch uh, from Tandy of course and this really great cutting board and I've got a mallet so just line it up on the hole on the dot it's so easy I've got this you know my tools are sharp so they work easily and it makes it super fast and easy. Now, one of the other options that I like to use are one of these hole punches. This rotary punch is really nice. It's got different sizes. I use the largest one and just line up the uh, point on the little dot that I've made on my pattern and see how easy that is. Now, this is really great. I like this is probably my preferred tool. The only thing is that I'm doing so many um, holes on these patterns that I'm going to save my wrists and I'm going to go ahead and keep using my hole punch because it's fast. It's fast and it's just effortless. I have this really awesome old mallet. I got it when I bought the business and I love it, but you can also find one of these on Tandy. So that's really nice. And I've got so many holes to punch here. I'm just going to go ahead and keep going. <laughs> and then I'll come back and we'll do some uh, hand stitching. We are past the halfway mark. I've punched all the holes in the pattern. And uh, now um, I'm about to start hand sewing. Before I do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and glue this insole to this uh, bottom sole pattern and that way it'll dry while I am sewing the legs. So I just set the uh, pattern just like it is in the uh, diagram and I'm going to go ahead and trace the outline because I like to um, keep the glue within the lines. It keeps it a little cleaner, especially if I'm making a shoe for a customer. I want to make sure that the inside looks really nice and clean. So I have my volcano glue pot, um, but this is really great because it keeps my glue. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that glue right in the lines. And this is very easy. It's a no-brainer, but uh, This leather uh, tends to soak up the glue pretty quickly, so um, you can put a little extra glue on or go over it a second time. But I've got a lot of glue on there. And then I'll just line this up. And the other thing about this leather is that it sticks really well. I mean, once you get this glued in there, it's it's just super. In the advanced version, I'll show you some other techniques that I use on this boot pattern with some glue. On to our next step. I really enjoy this part. I don't know why I do, but I just like the sewing. I have uh, selected for you a package of needles from Tandy, and they've got all kinds of uh, awesome options. And the one I'm using is this medium-sized needle here. I'll try to get a little closer for you so you can see that. There we go. And um, I like it because it's long enough and it's not too big. And the pattern is going to call for, it does call for four feet of this waxed thread. 
and so this wax cord which is really nice and so we've got let's see 48 inches should do it so cut that there all right and uh, these needles are super easy to thread all right so uh, don't tie, you know, we don't tie a knot in it. And what we're gonna do is we are going to start with the vamp and the front of the leg. That's this piece here. And I'm gonna go ahead and line up the first hole, the first hole on the leg and the first hole on the vamp right here. And I line those holes up. And I come in from the back side. And one thing that they don't say in the pattern that I like to do is once I've done this one, I like to tie these off so I don't have to keep holding it. So I do a little quick little knot there. And that makes it easier to kind of move this pattern around because as you work it, you have to flip the pattern over and over, you know, kind of flip it around sometimes. Um, but this one's pretty easy. So I'll just go ahead and continue. This is so easy. I mean, anybody can do this. to make sure I'm going through the right holes. Once you do all this work, you don't have to go back and fix it. So I'm kind of fast because I've been doing it for a long time. I've made so many of these. And to come back through like that. And it's, it's pretty clear what you have to do. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this and then I'll come back. I'm gonna do it this way to the end. I'm gonna stop here for a minute and uh, talk to you about what I'm doing. So I've gotten to the end of my stitching here and the instructions call to go back through one more time and you would fill these little gaps. And I that's fine, it works super, but I've also, um, Generally, I don't do the back, do it coming back. And this is what, what it looks like. And I've done so many like this. And the, one of the reasons why I like it like this is one, it's easier. And two, is it actually kind of ties into the same look that you have with the moccasin tying around here. And in this video, we're also gonna do that same one stitch up and down the legs because these hold together so well. I've never seen a, a reason to have to do the extra stitching. So for your own taste preference, if you wanna do the extra stitching, go for it. It'll just make it that much stronger. Um, but I will say that it'll work out just fine if you don't and you wanna just leave it like this, which is what I'm gonna do. And so with that, when I get to this end, I like to go ahead and just, um, stitch it, tie it off, and I tie it off on the back so that it looks nice. I also like to leave a, about another two and a half inches of thread because at another point in this, when we're stitching on the back leg, I like to tie these to the back leg as well. I'm ready to move on to attaching the back of the leg. And so um, I usually put the front panel over the back panel. And the concept is exactly the same. I use five feet of uh, wax sinew. And same idea, exact same thing that we did with the front. It's so simple. And here, um, I do start at the second hole from the bottom. That's what the instructions will tell you. And there we go. And here we are. So I'm just gonna keep, take it to about, leave about two and a half inches left over. I, again, I like to come around that hole and I like to tie these off because I, it's 
tricky to hold that end. So just tie it off, it makes it easy. Okay, and the idea is the same. I'm just going to, it's the exact same thing that we did here. That's the pattern I'm gonna do. Because I like the way it looks, it all ties together. And again, just every once in a while, maybe take a look and make sure that you've got the holes lined up on the back. You really want that to happen because that'll make a difference in the end with your end product. But this part's so easy, I love it. So you get the idea, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going all the way up the leg and I'm gonna stop and tie it off at the top. And once I'm done with that, I'll turn around and do the other side. It's exactly the same thing. Super easy and easy to follow the instructions on it. I'm on to the next side here. And I actually thought I'd show you this because um, two things. One, when we put these two pieces together, we had the front overlap the back. And it's always good to have that look consistent. Although it wouldn't be terrible if you made a mistake and did it the other way. But it is nice to have the front overlapping the back. And one, one reason why I thought I'd show you this is because it can get a little tricky. Uh, the other side was easy because it was flat, but this is going to make a tube. And to get your hand in there and, you know, I just thought I'd, give, I'd show you what it's like. So I'm doing the same steps that we did on the other side, coming in from the inside on the second hole from the bottom, going like this, leaving about two and a half inches. And then, as you know, I like to come back through the bottom hole and tie a knot so I don't have to hold on to it. Okay, and I am just gonna show you how I do it. I'm coming in here. Okay, so as you can see, I finished with this whole leg here, and um, it's pretty easy, as you can tell. Um, I just was able to zip through both sides, but I thought I'd just show you how I maneuvered that leg right there. So here we're demonstrating how to attach the vamp to the sole. And of course, we always need to start with our first knot. So I'll string this through the bottom hole here and tie off a nice, good, strong knot. Now this is the spot, we're gonna pick the one spot where we've marked from the pattern, come up through the inside, and this is where you wanna pay close attention. Once you've pulled it taut, you're gonna to go to the next set of holes right there and run your needle through. I find it easier to go through the two holes at once so it's not confusing. Then I put it through the bottom hole and you repeat this all the way around the shoe.
I'm down to the very last hole and um, it gets a little tricky. So I put the needle through and pull it through, but now it needs to be, see, isn't that a beautiful finish? And um, now it needs to be tied off. So I go ahead, I'm gonna take the needle off of the thread because you don't need that. And you know, you can be pretty uh, rough with these. They're so durable, I'm telling you, they're gonna last a really long time. So I just go inside here. So much fun. There we go. Here is my final string. And see, so this is why I like to leave some lengthy uh, strings because then you have something uh, to which you can tie a knot. So I do that. As I was uh, stitching that together, I was keeping uh, the tension really, uh, I'm gonna do it just a couple more times because this is a key stitch. Okay, like that. And I'll grab my scissors. And again, I like to leave a little bit of length on those just because if I ever need to make an adjustment, the client can't feel it um, and they're not too long. So I like to leave them just in case something comes undone. You still have room to stitch them back together, especially as a beginner, you might run into that. But I'm gonna show you something else so you can see how durable these are. They're awesome. Come on, boots. Okay. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. This is a completed Plains Boot Moccasin. I like mine without the fringe. I find that a lot, it's more, um, it's easier for me to sell so I don't put the fringe on it. And it's just kind of plain. Once you put the fringe on, it really makes it a specific boot. So I like it like this. This is your basic version and it's so wonderful. You can wear it like that. Um, but we are actually going to go on to the advanced version now and which will include a sole and some different stitching so let's go ahead and get that started here we are at the advanced section and what we're going to be doing is this boot here and we're going to stitch it here with the sewing machine and we're also going to stitch it here with the sewing machine. So we're not going to do this stitch here either, which means that the only holes that we have to uh, punch are the bottom, these two layers of rows. Same on the vamp, these two layers of rows. And we're also going to stitch this section here. I mean, you know, we're going to uh, punch these holes here. So that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and trace these patterns just as they are and um, you'll see how quickly this moves. It's so fun. So even though it's advanced, it's easier. I'm making great progress. I've gotten everything cut out. And as you can see, I don't have a bunch of holes. I just have holes on the back of the legs down here and on the sole and on the front of the vamp. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch out those holes and we'll come back and do some gluing got the hole punching done. I'll show you there. Yeah, that looks nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue. I have shown in my uh, other videos, this is my glue gun. I love it. It's actually an oil gun, but I put my contact cement in there. And if you notice that the, like on the other boot, this, these holes, which create the seam are about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So um, without drawing anything on here, I'm gonna put glue a quarter of an inch around here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a quarter of an inch around, I'm sorry, this side here. That's These edges are gonna fit inside there. So I wanna determine first, I wanna make sure that this is going to go on top of the leg like that <laughs> and um, so I'm gonna make sure to put glue on the inside of this pattern and on the outside of this one 
I'm gonna give you a close-up shot so you can see what I'm doing and that'll be easier to understand. And then after that, we'll go ahead and use our sewing machine to stitch it all together, which I can't wait to do because that's the new Genome 3000 and it's gonna be fantastic on this leather. So let's get going. Okay, let's take a poll. Who wants to play on the genome? Oh, okay, me. Here we go. This machine is so effortless. I mean, I have tried so many machines. If you are a person looking for a good leather sewing machine, this is the one. Oh man. It's so powerful that I have to just, you know, practice it, get used to it. And um, it is like sewing through a butter. Oh my gosh, thank you Tammy Leather for making my life easier. We are at the last part of this advanced moccasin. And what I've done is I've taken these Power Step orthotics. It's an insole. And I love these. I wear these in my shoes. And I put it inside the boot. And then when I pull it tight, I can see the outline of that insole on there. And that tells me that's where I'm going to want to put the glue for the sole that I'm going to cut out. And I don't want to have a bunch of glue all over the place, so I'm going to pre-draw my line like such. And maybe come in here, right about here. It's pretty easy. And I'm going back to using my um, contact cement. And I do the same thing that I did when I glued that insole onto that sole. So I'm just going to apply the glue. There we go. Wherever I put the glue is where the sole is gonna stick. And I actually go over the pen line so that once you put the sole on, you can't see the pen mark. And this is really durable. It lasts a long time. I have have them on my, my moccasins and I've retired those moccasins to the garden finally because I've wore them so much. So I'll be, like I said, I'm making a new pair here for myself. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue the sole material. And once they've cured for about 15, 20 minutes, I'll hammer them together. I'll show you that. And then I'm going to cut it with my razor knife to trim it off. And this is what you can do at home. 
Um, I also do have a big industrial sander that I could use, but I don't think that's even necessary for your do-it-yourselfers. I'm making the pattern now for the bottom of this boot. That's the last step in the advanced version. And I happen to use this really light, it's called orthopedic crepe. It's my industrial material that I use in my shoe repair business. I, however, I do believe that Tandy sells some soling material um, throughout their catalog. You can look at their website and you can also use something like a quarter inch heavy duty leather, that would work. Um, you can also use felt, your craft stores will have a thicker felt. Uh, for the street worthy, the leather might be the best choice. But I'm gonna use this and uh, it's pretty simple. You know, I don't have to be super accurate because I'm going to do a final hand trimming at the very end. So you can see the extent to where, you know, how accurate I'm being. Great. You know, once you get handy with your razor knife, uh, you'll find lots of uses for it. I've been using mine for so many years, I'm pretty good at it. So, you know, I just advise to be careful. And I'm using this cutting, it's a self-healing cutting mat from Tandy and boy, it sure is great. I do, like I said, I do a lot of uh, trimming here and stuff like this. So I've got the one side, I'm just gonna make it easy for myself, double it over. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the glue to these so that they can cure while the rest of the boot is drying. And we are so close to being finished. I mean, this is so exciting. I'm going to apply the sole to this boot now, and it's so easy. I just thought I could put you guys in my workshop here. And um, so I've let the glue cure for about 25, 30 minutes. So I'm just pressing it down. And from home, that really even should be enough just to kind of, you know, squish it together because this glue is so strong. I, however, have this fantastic uh, shoe jack that I'm going to use. And my French hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this using this razor blade. I usually would use a sander, but I have come to find that just with a little time, you get pretty handy and you can just trim it off yourself if you go slowly like this. And this does just fine. See that? I don't pull it towards me just in case it gets loose for me. And I go really slowly. No sense in rushing. And again, this is the advanced version. So, you know, I assume that you have a little bit of skills there that you're doing this, taking on this adventure. And there we go. I will do a little bit of my own hand trimming, you know, to clean that up, but wow, we did it. For all of you that made it to this part, woohoo, high five. Yeah, great job. If you made it to the end, you deserve a good applause. That was quite a long tutorial. The steps are really simple. So thank you so much, Tandy Leather Factory, for sponsoring this video. And to my YouTubers, thank you for subscribing and for watching. Again, from Maui, Hawaii, aloha.